Hey guys, this is Ed, Paul, and Anna of Current Brand Media, and we are here to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Sportsball is a great subscription service geared towards minor league baseball fans. Each box features a different minor league team. You get a box every three months with minor league baseball gear, including different styles of hats like Ed's favorite, the dad hat. The cost is less than $12 a month. Proceeds from each box goes to More Than Baseball, the only nonprofit dedicated to the well-being of minor league baseball players. We all know that Parents' Days are coming up this summer, so if you've got a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa who are particularly difficult to buy for, but you know they're baseball fans, this is the answer, guys. Meet your new favorite team at sportsballbox.com. Is there anybody there? <laughs> Well, the first time that I got a chance to step up to the plate in a game, it was you know it was a game that was out of hand. The manager said, "You're like, all right, Mandel, grab a bat." Um, I wasn't thinking about writing the book. I wasn't thinking about uh, you know editors and uh, when the deadline is to turn in chapters. I was just thinking, "Oh my God, I got a chance to get a hit." What's up, Dad Hat Crew? Ed here, and on this episode, I bring you Brett Mandel. Brett Mandel is an author of the book called Minor Players, Major Dreams, where he spent a season with the newly formed Ogden Raptors during the 94-95 season. He is also the uh, co-creator of the company Baseball Barbecue. We talked about both the book and how he created the company. This was a lot of fun. So guys, without further ado, I'll give you the episode. All right. Well, I want to welcome you guys to yet another episode of the Dad Hat Chronicles. You guys already know who I am. My name is Ed. And with me today, guys, I have the partner, chief financial officer and utility player at Baseball Barbecue, Mr. Brett Mandel. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, Ed. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. I uh, researched you guys, saw you guys were, you know, doing some awesome work with uh, at Baseball Barbecue. So I definitely wanted to get you in and uh, get hear the story of how they uh, how the company came about. But before we touch on to uh, that, uh, my very first question I ask everybody is, take me back. You're a, you're a kid. How did you become a fan of baseball? It's Father's Day coming up. So, of course, my story is cliche. You know, yeah. dad, take me out, have a catch in the backyard, taught me to throw, taught me to hit, was my first baseball coach. Uh, this was the game. This was mm-hmm. the, the way – we related to each other, whether it was a catch his conversation or sitting there watching a ball game and wondering, is this guy going to bunt? Are they going to steal? Um, I think of all the tragedies of the modern game, the fact that there is so much less small ball, so much less stealing and bunting. Uh, my dad and I would have never had a conversation watching modern baseball. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Is there going to be a strikeout, a walk or a home run? <laughs> it's one of those three right now. Exactly. Uh, it's funny you say that because I'm a firm believer in small ball. Firm believer in it, bunting, pushing the player over. It's one of those things that I look forward to in a baseball game. But like you said, it's becoming less and less important. And the long ball is becoming more important to uh, to players and teams nowadays. Someday when they bring the move the runner derby, that's when I'm going to have a shot to make it to the bigs. But until then, <laughs> we're I'm just sitting, on, two sitting fans. up in the stands. That's right. Absolutely. Um, so... Uh, the way I found you, I, I did a little bit of research on you, right? And then I found out that back in uh, 94, you yourself decided that you uh, took it upon yourself to become a player, a baseball player. Um, okay. How, uh, you know, obviously you, you wrote a book about it, right? You know, minor players, major dreams. Uh, tell me how that idea came about. So uh, 1993, the Phillies were having that uh, tremendous worst to first year where they went to the World Series and lost to the Blue Jays. And Mm -hmm. I was so enjoying baseball, being a fan. Uh, I was out of college for uh, for a year. Uh, I was working in the municipal government in Philadelphia and not particularly happy about it. And um, I, I started thinking about how much fun the world of baseball is and especially the world of minor league baseball and uh, work to create a book proposal where I would be an author in uniform to do a sort of paper lion meets bull Durham chronicle of a minor league season. And I found a team, the Ogden Raptors, it was their, uh, their inaugural year. And so they were looking for press and attention and uh, notoriety. 
So they, yeah, they brought me on. And for the 1994 season, I was riding the buses, riding the pines in the dugout, uh, taking warm ups every once in a while, got a sniff of game time and <laughs> had a blast. You know, what, what could be better than being chased around by, uh, you know, uh, autograph seekers and groupies? Uh, yes. Yeah, funny you say that. Cause like I, I always wanted to do it. All I wanted was at least one season of minor league baseball. That never happened, obviously. Uh, but when I, you know, when I was doing the research, I'm like, wait a second, I have this book. I literally just got this a couple of weeks ago. So I'm like, hold on a second. And, you know, to my surprise and a very good surprise, you are the author on it. And that's amazing. I think that's, uh, you know, you're sitting there, you're like, you know, I want to do this, you know? Well, I, I look at that book and especially the back cover with my cute picture on it. And I think, you know, in my mind, I'm still that guy, um, uh, a little bit less hair, some of it more gray, but uh, <laughs> you know, if I could turn back the clock, I'd do it in a second. It's fun. I, and that's, I would do it all over, but you still play baseball, don't you? Yes. Yeah, still uh, an old guy playing. In fact, that's uh, a lot of how we came to talk to each other with this uh, baseball barbecue thing we have together. Um, I still play old guy baseball here in Philadelphia. I'm actually commissioner of our old guy league and I coordinate a team of old guys. Now, now we're, we play 40 plus baseball out in the men's senior baseball league world series out in Arizona. And, um, you know, we were, we were lucky enough actually to win it last year, uh, which was really exciting and nothing, nothing better than jumping up and down on the field at the end of the game, uh, like you're 10 years old. Um, and, but it's, it's great fun. It keeps me a little bit young. Um, and, uh, I wouldn't trade it for a second. That's amazing. I love that. I think that's first of all, and then after probably you ended up, you know, a lot of icy hot, you know, after your championship, you know, just because I'm 40 right now. And then I knew I said, if I go running, I'm sore for the next couple of days after that. Well, after you win the championship, you're drinking beer from the cup. You don't, you don't need icy yeah, hot. Yeah, that's that. right. You can't, you can't feel your arm for days. Uh, so let me ask you, because, you know, you say you, you spent the whole season with, with the Ogden Raptors and all that. Um, they obviously were all, all in on that because right. You were, they, you were about to give them some publicity uh, and they were all fine with that. Uh, how did, you know, a lot of the people that you were letting them know that you were about to do this, how did they take that? The news? Did you did get a lot of pushback on it or how that go? So during the season, of course, it was uh, it was a mixed bag because yeah. uh, on the one hand, there were some guys who weren't so thrilled about the, you know, someone maybe peeking over their shoulder or telling what's going on with their lives. Um, then, of course, there were plenty of guys who would walk up to me during a game or during practice and say, you know, ah, Brett, you know, baseball is a lot like life. You getting this down? And uh, <laughs> you know, I was sometimes those were good. And I was like, wait, 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 say, say it again. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, once the book came out, you know, some guys were the heroes of the story and were thrilled. And some guys were not thrilled about the way they were por portrayed. And mm -hmm. um uh, you know, that's uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, their mothers might uh, see a different side of them. I only saw the side that, that I saw in the book. And, mm -hmm. you know, while the book is is a lot of fun talking about the, the good side of, uh, you know, chasing your dreams in the minor leagues, uh, there's struggles. And there are, you know, folks who are coming face to face with the end of their dreams, the end of their careers, or at least their careers in baseball. Um, the realization that uh, what we see from the outside that looks like all the best players filter to the top, it's its not a total meritocracy and mm -hmm. uh, there's politics and there's gamesmanship and there's some folks who, uh, who end up uh, on the losing end of some decisions that, uh, frankly, you or I might have seen differently. Interesting, because as a player, you know, you're just trying to hold on, you know, for the last, you know, possible out, it was like, I got to make it. I can't make it. And then you think about it the next season. You're like, all right, let me see if I can do it one more time. And, you know, just to see that, to be able to experience that must have been like an experience that obviously I've never experienced before. And I wish I would have been able to do that at least. Yeah. And then some of the things that I found that, uh, that I found a little bit surprising, you know, you say, and I say that, my God, they would have to rip the Jersey off my back. I would mm -hmm. keep trying and trying. But there were some guys who would say, you know what, I see where this is going. I see that the organization doesn't have any faith in me. Um, I'm going to hang it up and go back home and work for my dad. Or, you know, I'm going to go back and uh, hang out with my girlfriend. This, this just isn't, isn't going anywhere. Uh, some folks walk away from it. And, and other folks try and try and try, but uh, maybe they don't have scouts from the front office invested in them. They don't have money invested in them in terms of the club uh, giving them a bonus. 
and they see other guys being promoted ahead of them and say, you know, why am I doing this? Uh, you know, I, the politics in the game is against me. I should uh, you know, get on with my life before uh, before it passes me by. So, um, you know, there's plenty of folks who are dreaming and who fulfill their dreams and get to the majors. And of course, it's a wonderful story. And then there's tons of kids who were really good, but maybe just didn't have the faith of the club behind them or ran into an injury problem or just, uh, you know, had something going on in their lives that they couldn't focus on baseball. And maybe that kid who threw a 95 mile an hour fastball could have been in Yankee Stadium someday if something else had worked out. It's funny, all the stars have to align in order for you. To, I mean, it's not hard. It's hard, extremely hard just to move up within the minor league system and it, even harder just to make it to the majors, you know? Right. And of course, when I did my book, this was back when the draft had many, many more rounds. Mm -hmm. and so there were many, many more players. And for for every first round draft pick, number one overall, who makes it and you think, wow, scouting and drafting is easy. You have a guy like Mike Piazza who was taken in the, you know, uh, a zillionth round as a favor to Tommy Lasorda and goes on to be a Hall of Famer. And you think, well, he can't be the only guy who got passed over and passed over and passed over who was really good at this game. Some folks make it. Some folks don't. Some folks make it for good reasons. Some folks don't make it for not so good reasons. Yeah, it's and it's the way that it goes. It's the way that it goes. Now, you were able to experience that while you were there, like you're just. I was like, I, this is it, guys. I am done. I, it, it's not going anywhere. You well, know. I, I, there, it was clear to me that I wasn't going anywhere. I was in right <laughs> there. There was, there was knew, no question in my mind. You knew day one. I I don't have it. <laughs> That's right. Although uh, the first time that I got a chance to step up to the plate in a game, it, it was you know it was a game that was out of hand. The manager said, "You're like, all right, Mandel, grab a bat." Um, I wasn't thinking about writing the book. I wasn't thinking about, uh, you know, editors and uh, when the deadline is to turn in chapters. I was just thinking, oh, my God, I've got a chance to get a hit. Uh, let me see if I can get a fastball. Um, and for you know, one second, who knows what happened right. if I can, what, maybe I connect with the first one, maybe it puts me in the lineup. So uh, it's it's infectious and it's hard. It's hard not to dream when you see it laid out, go from rookie ball to single A to double A to uh, Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Yeah. And it's, you're there. You're like, I'm going to do anything I can just because they're your teammates during that time. You're oh, sure. You, sure they sure, are sure. your teammates. You know, they confide in you and all that. Granted, you were writing a book about it, but you know, it's, this is the camaraderie of it. You know, I, I did a lot of uh, coaching first base uh, for the team. You know, as, as you say, you do whatever, uh, whatever to win. I had uh, you know, a chance to help. Uh, the biggest contribution that I could make was we had some very complicated signs coming to us from the third base, ba uh, third base coach. Mm -hmm. A lot of the guys on the team couldn't pick up the signs very well. So mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they would uh, get the sign, they would nod, and they would glance over to me and I would give them an open hand if they were stealing and a closed hand if they were staying. <laughs> I, I, I could pick up the signs very well. They couldn't. So uh, one, one little way to, tell, to help the team. Absolutely. And then you're just helping out. And that's all that matters right there. That's right. Um, tell me about the home opener, right? That when you guys like that was our very first game, you know, you guys are like the book says like limousines and all that, you know, what was that experience? So uh, not only was this the first game of the year for the Ogden Raptors, it was the first year, the first game of the Ogden Raptors franchise. Ever, uh, yeah. Baseball had been in Ogden many, many years. There were the Ogden A's, there were the Ogden Dodgers. But this was the first year in, in decades that there was minor league baseball back in Ogden. So uh, we had a huge crowd. Not only was the crowd standing room only in the bleachers and all around uh, in the seats, but they let fans onto the warning track and fans sat in the warning track in play. They made a ground rule that if the ball rolled into the fans, it was a, it was a double. But uh, the, the fans were on the field in play huge, huge crowd. And they gave us the Royal treatment. We came in on limousines. We all introduced ourselves to the fans. And again, you know, I was there writing the book, but it felt pretty cool to stand up and get a big ovation when I introduced myself. Well, they, the fans didn't know, right? The fans I mean, didn't know. No one, you know, only the team knew and then that was it. Right. And I, I even had uh, two little guys who um, I had given autographs to early in the season and they became my fans. And, um, I didn't get into very many games, period, um, mm -hmm. let alone, you know, home games when it mattered. And these kids would come to the game and they, you know, mom, when's 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 Brett Mandel going to get in the game? And you know, they'd ask me and I was like, well, you know, 
got to be the right opportunity. And um, one game I did get into a home game and uh, I fouled a ball off at the plate that ended up in the stands. And one of my little guys went and got my ball so I could sign it. And you know, what a thrill that was. That's awesome. That's amazing, right? You made it. If they don't know, you made the kids, you know, dream right there. That's awesome. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, something in the book that you that you wrote is that the the magic is truly in you know minor league baseball, right? The fir- the the higher you go, the less that you see that. Um, do you still believe that to be true in 2022? I, I do. And, 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 and the magic I, I see is through the connection that right. you can you can meet the ball players, mm-hmm. You can talk to them uh, in the minor leagues. There's less of a separation. Uh, certainly, you're not staying in luxury hotels and eating at five star restaurants. You know, we would go out to Denny's. Um, we would hang around the park uh, for hours before the game, hours after the game, you know, just talking to people. We lived with host families. So, uh, you know, we would go to community barbecues and cookouts and whatever. Uh, we were part of the family. That's uh, amazing. Mike Trout is obviously not living with a family in Los Angeles. And no. uh, when he's when he's on the road, he's he's not rolling into the local diner. He's, uh, you know, maybe having room service or going someplace where they're serving him. It's just so much harder to form that connection. Uh, and as I said, those, those two little guys that used to chase me around, we bonded because they asked my autograph and I talked to them and I asked the kid, what did he have for breakfast? And uh, where does he go to school? And, you know, they now knew me. They, you know, Brett's my friend. He's, uh, you know, when he, when I would see them come to the rail to ask for autographs, I would go over, Hey Danny, what's going on? How you doing? Right. That's amazing. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, through my podcast, I've been able to connect with a lot of people in minor league baseball, uh, and, you know, I have not had a situation where they, you know, a lot of big situations where they said, no, I don't want to come on the podcast is absolutely let's do it. What can we do for you? You know, and, and it's, and it's all about because they understand that the fans are, we are fans. All of us are fans. I'm a fan of baseball, right? And that I love the game, but I'm also a fan of the people that work there and it's, and it's amazing. And you're right. I think you're right. It, the magic is still there in minor league baseball you can certainly touch and feel the game get close to the players uh you know get close to the field yeah absolutely very close to the field so yeah uh so let's go forward now and you know now then you decide that you know what i want to we want to let's put a uh this uh this company together uh uh baseball barbecue you know how that come about So uh, we're old guys. We play baseball together. We go out to this tournament every year in Arizona. There's uh, a lot of baseball to be played. And then after the game, there's a lot of uh, sitting around a hot tub and uh, getting your arm back together and drinking a few beers and just talking. And one of the guys told us about how his dad had taken a, a broken grill tool and a cracked baseball bat and made a fork mm-hmm. just because it was useful. Uh, we thought that was a great idea. We looked into it. Nobody had a patent on this idea. So we secured the patent for baseball bat handle tools for barbecuing, put the company together slowly but surely, uh, rolled it out two years ago this June uh, as baseballbbq.com. So you can get our patented tools. You can get our fun cutting boards. You can get hats and T-shirts. We even have a a local chef here in Philadelphia made us up a rub, uh, Chef Big Rube's Diamond Dirt Rub. So it's all right here. It's celebrating the game. It's celebrating the grill. And, uh, you know, we like to say you can step up to the plate like a big leaguer. Yeah. And it's, it's some cool stuff. I'm looking at it right now. And then, you know, we were talking of, 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 of the uh, interview or like before this, and then he said, now you guys just recently got uh, able to now do minor league baseball, right? Not just major league, but minor that's league right. baseball. And, and now you're talking my language, right? Cause that's where I spend most of my time is in minor league baseball, you know, so, like, yeah, the, the tool, the tools are totally customizable. We can laser engrave, whatever you want uh, on the handles, on the knobs. So if you want to write Ed's grill, we can write Ed's grill. If you want to write, I love you, dad, I love you, dad. But now that we have major league players association licensing, major league licensing, minor league license, even college team licenses. If you want to have the Ogden Raptors on your uh, cutting board, you can have it. If you want to have the 
uh, a set with the uh, New York Yankees logo on the uh, on the uh, on the knob. You got it. You want to have a Mike Trout plate? You can do it. Um, Mississippi State uh, Bulldogs, go for it. Uh, and you know, with with Father's Day, it's it's touching and fun to mm-hmm. read the engravings that come in with the orders. The I love you, Dad. The thanks, Coach. The uh, you know, uh, Dad want to have a catch. Uh, uh, engravings they're terrific to read and then it's uh you know seeing the the, the players freddie freeman is our biggest seller uh when he moved from atlanta i thought i wonder if people are still gonna be getting freddie freeman yeah freddie freeman is still our biggest seller uh la or atlanta folks just seem to really love freddie i mean what's not to like about the guy his uh his story is great you know Absolutely. he's and you know all around good human being so i can see that and, and you guys, you got some cool stuff, some bottle openers and, you know, like the, the cutting board, it's shaped like a home plate. And that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, well, one of the things that has been a lot of fun is, you know, we're, we're doing this. We're baseball guys. We're grill guys. But obviously we're not major leaguers and we're not pit masters. And mm-hmm. when guys come to us and say, you have a, a great little home plate cutting board, can you make one that's full size and can you have a droop trough so that, uh, you know, we can put serious meat on it. Mm-hmm. All right. So we went out and made a 17 inch full home plate with a truth trough. You did. Um, when, when we were making our tongs, we went to some pit master pals and said, which model do you like? What's important to you with tongs? And they said, Oh, look, it's got to have this locking mechanism. It's got to have this, it's got to have that. So, uh, you know, uh, folks who know what they're doing for baseball, love them. Folks who know what they're doing for grilling, love them. I was just going to say, because I'm looking at them and then, like you said, is, you know, you have the the tongues with the locking mechanism, right? And it locks, you know, then you have the the spatula, which you're able to cut at the yep. same time you're holding it. So, I mean, that's... We, we got that, that pigtail flipper that uh, if when yeah. you're cooking the, the brontosaurus steaks, you can flip one of those with the little pigtail flipper. Yeah. So, and obviously this is your second year. Um, have you seen, you know, that this has been, you know, you made the right choice and said, you know what, this is something that we're proud to have done, you know, now as, as a company. Well, look, if the Phillies called tomorrow and said, they want me to play second base, I'm walking out the door of baseball <laughs> BBQ and I'm playing second base, but, uh, you know, we're having a blast. We've actually doubled sales every year so far. So uh, we're on pace to do that again this year especially with the major minor league licensing, you know, lots and lots of people are, are thrilled to, uh, to be getting Father's Day presents or birthday presents or, mm-hmm. you know, groomsmen gifts. It, it, it's making a lot of people really happy. And of course that makes us really happy. Yeah. I, I have, I'm a fan. I'll tell you, I was looking at it today. I was like, you know, honey, I, I know, I think this is pretty cool. You know, maybe a father's gave, you know, father's day gift, you know, would be in order for me. I'm just saying, you know, I do grill a lot. Just saying, babe. <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, you, you're working, you know, I, I see that you work with uh, um, UniWatch as well, which is something that's pretty cool. Um, how that all right, so let, let me, all right. So let me ask you, uh, if you're a UniWatch guy, do you uh, remove the maker's mark on the side of hats? Do you- I'm, I'm a UniWatch guy, but I do not. See, I, I'm yeah, we- one of the, I'm on, exactly, I, that, you know, you have your outdoor cap right on, right? I... I'm a fan of having the the name on it, whether it's like, you know, if I wear a 47 or a new era, whatever their brand is, I don't, I don't hate on that. So I'm okay with it. I no, know he we, has an issue with it, but. We, we, we love the UniWatch thing. And uh, it's funny because uh, I just saw that, that he posted, it's the 23rd birthday of UniWatch. And I certainly haven't been paying attention for 23 years, right. but I know that some of my buddies and I would call each other, you know, watching a game and we'd call each other and say like, check out the stirrups on this picture. What's going on there? Or like, did you see the belt that this one clown is wearing? How did he, um, and then somebody finally said, oh, you should watch UniWatch. I'm like, what do you mean? There's there's actually other people besides me who obsess over this stuff. Yep. And, uh, yeah, um, Paul's great. And uh, as you might imagine, making up the UniWatch collection took a lot of going back and forth to get it just right, exactly the way he wanted. <laughs> I'm sure that took a long time to do. Uh, yeah, but he's he's great fun, and uh, you know, folks like him. We we've sold some UniWatch collection things. I think it's great. Good for him, absolutely. Because again, it's a it's a brand, right? Uh, uh, it, 
something that I do. And then, you know, a lot of my friends on Twitter and all of that, we, we also look at the logos and, you know, what they, you know, like you said, the uniforms, what are they wearing? The hat, different hats, different identities and all that. So yeah, I'm, I'm there right with them. You know, it's, it's an obsession, I think sometimes. So what well, well, was, as I told you offline, you know, I'm, I'm wearing our baseball BBQ tournament hat and yep. uh, you know, the guys on this baseball team are, police officers and lawyers and uh, chefs and different things. You would not believe how, you know, call up a law firm partner and say, Hey, you got a minute to, uh, to talk. Uh, I got a minute. What, what do you got? I want to talk about the hat. Oh, the hat. Hang on. Let me, we're going to talk about the hat. And then we, we talk about the hat for an hour or you call <laughs> up a guy. We, we have a judge on our team. And I, uh, hey, you're, you're busy? Like, yeah, I got to be on the bench in, in like 15 minutes. Oh, can you talk about the pants some other time? Oh, we're talking about the pants? I, I can make time to talk about the pants. So uh, <laughs> how thick are we talking about the piping? Is the piping going to be uh, just, uh, you know, an inch wide or a half inch wide? If we decided uh, people are maniacs about this. I, you know what? But you got look good, play good. That's what, how I, I think about it. So oh, we, we love it. When, when, when our, our team now, we have our, our, uh, our home jersey, our away jersey. We have a batting practice T-shirt. We're head to toe uh, because if you don't do it head to toe, you know, some clown is going to be in gray pants and everybody else is going to be in white pants. And look, we, we spend our time away from our families and go out and have a blast on this trip. We want it to look as, as much like we know what we're doing as possible. And of course, you're not using any Philly, you know, Philly's colors at all. Right. I mean, there's no way. Uh, it crossed <laughs> our mind. <laughs> the the funny thing is, so, so we, uh, we we have the sort of Philly's throwback uh, 1970s colors of like the sort of burgundy and, uh -huh. uh, and powder blue. Uh, but we modeled our away jersey our home jersey is blue and then we modeled our away jersey after mississippi state because we just like that look uh they had just won the college world series last year and baseball barbecue well, was at a trade show showing off our fun things and the buyer from mississippi state came by and said you know hey this is awesome would, would you apply for licensing with us so that we could sell this stuff and we said yeah we're thrilled to do this and tell you what take a look at this picture we had a picture of us in our Mississippi state style jerseys, like, total coincidence. So our college collection started off with Mississippi state. Now we have, uh, we're going to have 11 colleges uh, by the college world series, but uh, it all started because uh, we like the look of Mississippi state. They like the look of our stuff and we made a little friendship. That's amazing. It's great. And again, you're, you know, it's all about the connections, right? The, the friends that you make along the way and just a uniform was what got you there. Absolutely. That I love that logo, by the way, the fork baller. I think that's great. Um, I love, like I said, I, I was looking at your apparel today, a t-shirt. I'm like, I got to get a hat. Or, but of course, you know me, you know, I'm a dad hat collector. And we had this, you know, before the interview, I was like, you know, I'm just going to wait until you have a dad hat and then I'll go ahead and get it. Uh, because I try color hat with the fork baller. It's amazing. It's, it's a home run, my friend. I love it. Yeah, some of our opponents when we were out playing, uh, said, that's a really sharp hat. Can can we get one? And you know, we only we, we made two dozen hats. We made two dozen hats because we had you know whatever it was, nineteen guys on the team. You can only get yep. them by a dozen. So we had a couple extra hats in our bag. So we sold a couple of hats out of our bag, and then when we got home, we said, why don't we put it up on the website and see if people will buy it? And yeah, sure enough, people buy the you know Philly style. I think we call it uh, tournament hat. Yeah. And it's a beautiful hat. I'm telling you that, you know, then you also have a uh, snapback, right. You know, with the, with your logo on the side. So I mean, yep. again, cool stuff. And it's all about getting your brand out there. Um, and, and I truly believe in that. That's why I wanted to reach out to you when we did this. So uh, any, any future plans for uh, baseball barbecue? We always have some future plans of more products with the bat handle, uh, uh, bat handle tools and bat handle other things. Uh, we have some other ideas for some cutting boards that should be coming out. Our chef wants to do a, a sauce. So we already uh, are, are planning a, a barbecue sauce to go along with our rub. Uh, oh. It's, it's exciting to be growing like we are. We gotta, we gotta hold ourselves back sometimes and say, <laughs> all right, let this be for 2023. Let's enjoy 2022 for a while. It's beautiful. I'm telling you right now, this thing is, and I love the, uh, the, the big, uh, uh, chef, big Rube's diamond dirt rub. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Don't, don't be surprised if chef Rube has a high heat hot sauce for next year. That's what I'm talking about. We definitely will uh, keep you guys, uh, right here. So that way 
I can uh, get some stuff from you guys. Um, all right. Uh, so um, you guys are all on, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, all of that stuff, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I do our Twitter stuff. So we're at, uh, at Baseball BBQ on Twitter. We're something on Facebook. We're something on Instagram. Someone says we have to do TikTok, so don't be shocked if we're on TikTok soon. <laughs> but uh, and, and anybody who wants to go to www.baseballbbq.com, all the links are there. Find us someplace. I love it. I love it. All right. Um, so are you ready, my friend? This is the part of the uh, interview where I say, are you ready for my famous, not so famous questions? I'm ready. All right. I'll give you an easy one. Um, when you go to the ballpark, yep. um, what is your food and drink of choice? Oh, that's easy. So uh, in Philly, uh, Greg Luzinski, a uh, big slugger from the 1970s of my youth, has a barbecue pit at Citizens Bank Park. I go straight to Luzinski's. They call it Bulls BBQ. Uh, say hello to the bull. Grab some ribs. That's what I love. Uh, and then, uh, depending on the, uh, the, certainly it's going to be a beer, <laughs> depending on uh, whether it's a light day or a dark day, we'll get something. Uh, but, uh, they, they go down pretty easy by the seventh inning. Yeah, they do. And if, especially if it's a hot summer day, a light, you know, summer shandy just goes down real easy. Exactly. There's little lining Kugel, uh, shandies. I'll put them away all night. And then, uh, <laughs> You know, it, when it, if it's real, real hot, I'll, I'll grab a Philly water ice and, uh, and cool off a little bit. There it is. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, what do you think the most boring sport is? <laughs> the most boring sport? I, I got to say, I'm not a soccer fan. I don't appreciate the beautiful game. Uh, I'm not excited about investing three hours to see a 0-0 tie and talk about uh, all the incredible ball possession that it, it's it's lost on me i, I apologize <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with that and it's okay that's why there's so many sports out there there's football basketball baseball cricket there's everything i mean there's a uh, frisbee now for god's sakes my, my son uh, who uh, who broke my heart by giving up baseball now is uh, an ultimate frisbee player and um yeah, that's fun to watch. I don't know any of the terminology, but uh, it's very athletic and uh, it, it's fast moving. So uh, I enjoy watching him. Someday he'll have to teach me the real rules. Uh, I'm with you there, my friend. I'm with you there. Uh, okay. If you could be a fictional character, any fictional character, who would you be? Any fictional character. Ever. Yep. How do you not want to be James Bond? <laughs> there, That's a good one. That is a good one. That's right. Listen, license to kill. That's a good one. I like it. I like it. I'll go with that. All right. Uh, favorite TV show growing up? Um, growing up, I was a Happy Days kid. Uh, the Fonz and Richie Cunningham. Uh, yeah. You know, run home, see what the gang at Arnold's was doing. Loved like that. it. I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. What has been the best Wi-Fi name that you've seen? <laughs> um, I, 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 I like when you go to somebody's house and the, the Wi-Fi is something like, uh, you know, FBI surveillance van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like those. Um, let's see here. Um, what do you think the worst song is? Ever? Yep. Worst song ever. Um, what was the, uh, the, the, the Titanic song that Celine Dion sang? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I couldn't yep. stomach that one, whatever yep. that one was. And it's all, and it, it's still to this day is being played all over the world. Yeah. That one I could live without. <laughs> um, okay. What is your spirit animal? Oh, elephant. I love elephants. Yeah. Nice. They're, okay. They're adorable. They are apparently incredibly intelligent. They yeah, very intelligent. Yeah. They're just incredible to look at. I, I loved elephants ever since I was a little guy. My mom will tell you a story that uh, I used to sleep on the floor because I was an elephant. And I, I one time tried to eat a vitamin by putting it up my nose the way an elephant does. <laughs> And they go to the doctor's office and have them get one of those alligator clamps and take it out of my nose. And they get it out. Yeah, exactly. Learned learn, learn the hard way that that's not the way people eat. <laughs> Never again. First and last time, right? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, what animal do you think is the biggest party animal? Biggest party animal besides Spuds McKenzie? Um, 
I'd, I'd like to think a gorilla could have a pretty good time. I agree. I agree. They just like all of a sudden just turn around and boom, off they go. Uh, have you ever re-gifted a gift? Sure. Who hasn't? Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and then here we go. Uh, what would be your weapon of choice in a zombie apocalypse? So uh, I've thought about this because, of course, uh, you know, there's lots of opinions on this. Uh, I even watched the Myth Mythbusters episode that showed that a chainsaw was more effective than a uh, than a shotgun. So if I was in the armory and the zombies were coming, I'd be grabbing the chainsaw. Interesting. I like your take. You know, you know, you did some market research on this. Exactly. This is this. I'm not. I'm not just making that one up. I I was ready with that answer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, last one here, my friend. Okay. Uh, what Disney princess would make the best spy? Best spy. Um, well, first of all, as a, as a father of, uh, of kids who have grown up watching all the Disney princess movies, I have strong opinions on lots of different things about Disney princesses. So uh, I, I know more about Disney princesses than I would like to that admit. That would care to admit, yeah. <laughs> With spy, you there. I'm going to say Rapunzel because she was, you know, spunky and resourceful and uh, she could kick a little ass. That little um, cast iron skillet, you know. Yes, exactly. Now, um, you know, I love Cinderella, mm -hmm. but uh, Cinderella, I'm taking home with me. I'm not sending her in the field to be a spy. Hey, so, <laughs> listen, I'm with you with the answer, though, because... Rapunzel, you know, the long hair, you can swing, you can do whatever you want. And then, like I said, the cast iron, she was very resourceful. We watched that movie a lot in this house. Frozen. The, uh, the, 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 the princess from Brave, she could kick us some ass, too. Oh, yeah, with the bow and arrow. That's yep. right. But I'll, I'll stay with Rapunzel. Uh, like I said, we've watched a lot of Disney movies here. My, my soon-to-be four-year-old daughter is all about Frozen and Encanto right now, so... I, I hear uh, even my, uh, my, my girls are now big, uh, but I still hear the, we don't talk about Bruno a lot. <laughs> That's right. My friend. That's right. Uh, Brett, thank you so much for doing this. This was a lot of fun. I am looking forward to see what you guys come up with over at baseball barbecue. I'm a huge fan as you already know. So uh, wish you the best of luck. I will put all of your social media um, handles and everything on the show notes. So that way uh, they make sure to follow you guys. Fantastic. And uh, you know, I, I like what you're doing. I got a chance to take a look at your social media and it's a fun little community that you've built. Uh, let, let's do something together. Absolutely. Let's work on that for sure. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Brett. Make sure you guys are following Baseball Barbecue on Instagram and Twitter. They're very active there as well. Um, but before I go, guys, make sure you guys go to www.baseballbarbecue.com forward slash dad hat. Now, if you do that and then you use code dad 20, you'll get 20% off of your purchase right before Father's Day. There's they have a lot of cool things, especially minor league stuff. Okay, guys. And always, 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 always support the minor leagues. See ya. This podcast is part of the Curved Brand Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brand Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna DiTomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at, at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. This is Patrick and Corey of BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at curvebrimmedia.com. <laughs>